All right, guys, here we are. It is uh, Wednesday, so we are now uh, three, four, five days into uh, our composting from yesterday. We're still sitting right at 160, maybe 161. You know, I say if you get over 160 by much, you need to turn it. Uh, I've never had to turn one of these. If And that is like, this is something else, because I had some questions that I'm hoping to answer today. That compost thermometer, I've probed all around in here and all around in here. And of the two bioreactors we built last Saturday, or this Saturday, I guess, really, um, that is the hottest spot I can find. So you are not gonna get uniform heat throughout any compost pile, but especially one of these. So if that one, and I'll, I'll check here and there, you know, a couple times a, a week, I'll move it around and see if I'm getting hot anywhere. And, and if it gets, like, if that hit 165, I'll take the garden hose and soak it down again. And that'll draw that heat back down. And by the time it builds back up again, we'll have gotten past it. This is really, really simple. Um, a lot of people asking like, you know, video showing how to make them or whatever. I plan on doing a class probably in January, uh, a local class. I'll have some material put together by then. We'll video that class. We'll probably make it available as a very inexpensive course. I have a platform called Learn Dash. I have a much larger course on something totally different that I want to release. And I need to learn, learn Dash. I need to learn the platform. So I'm probably going to use it. It'll probably be like a $20 class and it'll probably, you know, online class and it'll probably be 10 bucks uh, for members of my MSB. I'll probably do a 50% discount on that one just to give people a look at uh, what my online education platform will look like. But I'm not going to hide anything. It's just some people want more information. So here's one of the things I did want to cover with you guys today, how these pipes are done. So I have some questions on those exactly, you know, what's going on here. Understand there's no like, these aren't exactly a certain distance apart. That's just me by eye looking at it. All this is, I took a chop. This is thin walled drain pipe, all right? Cause it's cheaper than heavy walled schedule 40. That's the only reason I bought it instead of that. Um, then I took a chop saw and you cut about halfway in. You could drill, it doesn't matter. You just need some airflow in there. Now, I'm about to explain an idea I had. I bounced it off Michael Whitman. I'm waiting to hear back from him. I think he's probably gonna be positive to it, but a change that I would make. If you look most of these, they just have slits all the way the whole distance. If you look at this one, it has a much bigger gap on the top. This is one I made later because it doesn't need to have gaps up above the line of the compost. I would probably extend that a little bit more. And uh, if you look at right there, you can see where that comes up to. That, that slit would still be above. Maybe I would stop about as high as this slit for this idea. And that would be to actually fill the pipes with biochar. Now there's plenty of biochar in there, but somebody mentioned, you know, there's a lot of VOCs or volatile organic compounds that come off compost, and that's true. And I can tell you, there is enough of an odor. It's not bad, it's not heavy, but there is enough of an odor to know, in spite of how much biochar is in there absorbing those VOCs, because this is a straight pipe up and out where this can breathe, there's more of it happening here. So my thought is, if we fill these pipes with biochar, and they go through this process and these volatile organic compounds, these VOCs are coming up through this pipe and filtering through that biochar, it's gonna come out a lot cleaner. There's a more important part of that though. Those VOCs, and this is why composting isn't the uh, organic earth-saving miracle that a lot of uh, eco-weenies think it is. There is an awful lot of CO2 and an awful lot of other organic compounds that off-gas when you compost. And when you do a bioreactor, it's not cold enough today to really see, you really see it though. When you see that steam pouring out of there, it's not just heat and it's not just the air and the oxygen, it's those VOCs coming off. The best thing would be to capture them because they're plant food. So if we were to be running through pipes full of biochar, we'd have beautifully inoculated biochar at the end. So my other idea is somehow, we have to cap that end in a way that when we pull this pipe up and out, because like I said, you can just, see, right there I could pull that pipe. I just pulled it up an inch, back down it goes, not ready to pull it out yet. You can pull those pipes out. So you would then let them run for a few weeks until your core temperature began its decline, pull those pipes out and that biochar is ready to use. Uh, if we did my idea I had yesterday where we attach horizontal pipes into a greenhouse, we could continue that biochar all the way through the pipe. Now you might say, why don't you go ahead and fill them up? I don't have enough. I have like one half tub of biochar right now 
because we added so much to the coop, I have to do some more burns. But by January, when I do my, my mini on-site class, it'll be part of my course, I should have enough to you know build one more bioreactor as far as material, and I should have enough biochar to fill all five, maybe even six pipes, because I think I'm gonna go to a six pipe model. I got some other ideas too about making these a little bit better. Uh, if you notice, we had what I call pipe migration. That means you have a bunch of people, you tell them what you want, and they let things move. They're getting a little bit of wafting there, you can see on that one, because of the way the wind's coming across, and it's in the shade, it's a little bit cooler, so you can see the steam. But you can see this one, like, these, this pipe should really be about right here. So my other idea, and then I'll, I'll let you go for the day, is to take some pieces of rebar and stick them in the ground. This was actually one of the students' ideas. Put the pipes over the rebar. That will keep the pipes from being moved around as you're adding material. And that'll make it easier because I do these on my own sometimes and it's kind of a pain in the butt to try to hold these pipes and add the material. The other thing is you just take small flower plots and you put them over your pipes. And then that way when you're adding material, material doesn't go down inside your pipe. But if you fill them with biochar first, you wouldn't really care. So anyway, there's progress on this. Lots of questions. If you want to try this, don't wait on me. All you do is add your material, get a layer about, you know, that deep, completely saturated, then add another layer. And as long as you have enough carbon and nitrogen in there, you're going to get compost. The other thing you do is, unlike a traditional compost, if you're using straw anyway, we have this brick here. We actually have people step on this and step it in and pack it down so that we can fill it up. And uh, trust me, it won't be a problem if you try that. Take care, guys. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'll see what I can do.